If you love true crime and dark stories, then you'll love our other podcast, Dark Side of Wikipedia, with new episodes every Monday and Tuesday. He told them that in the year prior to Bundy's move to Utah, she had discovered objects that she couldn't understand in her house and in Bundy's apartment. His items included crutches and a meat cleaver that was never used for cooking. Just search Dark Side of Wikipedia wherever you download podcasts. You know, then this guy gets rich and he has some issues with sexual addiction. Yeah, and control. And, yeah. yeah. The uh, Keith Rainier story. Dark Side of Wikipedia. Press subscribe wherever you download podcasts and don't miss a single episode. It, in some ways, it starts to make things like Jeffrey Dahmer and that look tame, not in terms of, of the brutality of what they, they performed, but in terms of the psychology and manipulation of people. Dark Side of Wikipedia. Available wherever you download podcasts. Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, what kind of dark and malevolent spirit was lurking in the darkness of one person's laundry room? Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown. Possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That it is. 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And when you do, you become, uh, uh, when you sign up to be an EPP, rather, you become uh, a member of our, uh, our show where you get all these extra bonus things. You get extra EPP bonus episodes, advanced episodes of the show. You get our audio archive, our uh, ebook, our audiobook, so much uh, extra stuff as a thank you for your support. Five bucks a month at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to become an EPP extra podcast person of real ghost stories online. It's uh, Tony and Carol with you on today's episode of the program. And how are you? Hey, Tony, I'm fine. That's great. Thanks. Yeah. So this weekend was my birthday. It and, was. And if you're listening to this, like if you're not an EPP, my birthday was like six weeks ago or something yeah. like that. It's during May 18th. So yeah. Yes. Okay. So five weeks ago. Yep. So I have a, I had a croquet tournament. Ooh. I know nothing says crazy birthday party more than croquet tournament. It was um, event three out of um, the weekend. Mm -hmm. But tonight I realized that by having this croquet tournament, I inherited a really nice fold up lawn chair. Somebody <laughs> left it. It's mine. <laughs> and then when I went to sit down to do the podcast, I moved my chair out and I got me a new black hoodie. So wow. you know, the, the question is, do I say, Hey, somebody left their really nice blue chair over here and a black hoodie. Or do I just say, I, I don't know. I, to come back. You must have no, gone I, to another croquet tournament after mine. There's no know. black hoodie or lawn chair here at all. I don't. Yeah. I don't so care. sorry. And then I'll forget and I'll go to their croquet tournament with like their black anybody, hoodie, like anybody else that would have yeah. one <laughs> in in their black hoodie with their lawn chair. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh, whoops. Isn't that my lawn I chair? I didn't yeah. mean to do that. That might be a little awkward. It'd be a very yeah. odd conversation. It'd be very Curb Your Enthusiasm. You know, it's a very Larry David move almost. <laughs> it kind of is, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, no, this is mine. Uh, you sure? Yeah, it's hey, mine. And then at my next tournament, I like stash it. And it's like, <laughs> so anybody would say, you know, I think last time I was here, I left a chair. No, well. You make it the grand prize to the next Kurt K tournament. They, they win a <laughs> black hoodie really and a lunch. <laughs> Whatever. Instead, my grand my grand prize was a big jug of margarita mix. <laughs> oh, there you go. No, it was actual margarita. Yeah, I got it at the liquor store. It had liquor in it, supposedly. Well, anyway. In the future, it can just be whatever anybody leaves behind from the last tournament. That's the new grand prize for the next tournament. Right, and the other awesome thing was I also got a case of beer for my birthday. Mm -hmm. So there's that. It was it was a really good birthday. Good. Surprises, fun, all that, and a new chair and a new hoodie. There you go. Collecting slash stealing shit from your friends. Happy birthday. That's uh... No, I got it. I'll just be like, 
What? I thought that was my birthday present. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll give it back. That's oh, I didn't fine. know that. Thank that's you. Fine. I'm sorry. I mean, I did post about it on social media that I loved it, but that's okay. <laughs> Look at this wonderful gift. And they're probably like questioning, go, did I tell her it was a gift at some point in the night? Did I get that drunk? Did I say that? Is that what I... Yeah. Like, yeah, you said it was a gift. I got that and I got engaged on my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> all, all that stuff in one day. <laughs> Nothing like doing that like really fast. because that's... Okay, no, I did not get engaged for my birthday. Okay, that was a good. joke. That's a good joke. Okay. It's a funny joke. I know, it's but I'm not engaged. Funny joke. That's funny when you hear shit like that because it makes us go, <laughs> what the fuck? You... <laughs> <laughs> what, Carl? You got engaged on your birthday? Wow. Oh, okay. Wow. I see we're, uh, we're doing well here mentally. That's healthy. That's great. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ah. Maybe we better go to the first story. Uh, uh, 855-853-4802 <laughs> is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Oh, if you only knew. Uh, let's go to our first story. It says, I don't exactly know how to start this, and it might be a little long, but I'd like to share some of the experiences I've had. Uh, in the home I grew up in. For context purposes, I lived and grew up here in Salt Lake City, Utah, in home built in the 60s. Just your average home, nothing out of the ordinary. I had lived in the, many times in my life, the first until my biological parents became separated. And again, once I was old enough to decide which parent to live with. While living on the main floor as a child, my, many times I'd experienced my bed shaking violently in the middle of the night. Anytime I called my parents into the room, they had dismissed it as just my imagination. A rather large truck driving by. On other occasions, as I got older, I would have feelings of dread while using the main bedroom. On the floor in the middle of the other night, the feeling always came at random. And I envisioned a hand outside the door reaching to flip the light off. This had happened a few times. And upon exiting the restroom, thinking it was my father saying, Hey, why would you do that? There'd be no one there. I looked down the hallway to my parents' bedroom to see if they were still asleep. On one uh, such occasion, I felt a hand touch mine and quietly retreated back into the bathroom, locking the door and waiting for at least half an hour before trying to run back into my room. As time went on, I thought these weird occurrences had stopped. By this time, I had moved into the bedroom in our basement. I had a corner desk in the room where my computer was set up. I'd often be playing games on it well into the night. It would feel like someone had entered the room or was just standing in the doorway. Not thinking much of it at the time, I shrugged it off as my father just coming and checking on me and not saying anything. This bedroom I was in had two doors, one that led into the basement family room and one that led into the unfinished part of the basement where nothing but our laundry machines were kept. I stopped keeping them open at night as an indicator that I did not wish to be disturbed, but kept one slightly cracked for my cat to come and go as she pleased. It was one of the weirdest experiences for me so far. I had been playing on the computer one night during the summer when I heard the door open. I had known it wasn't my cat because whenever she entered my room, she'd always meow. I turned to look, expecting my father, but what I saw was something I couldn't comprehend at the time. I saw what looked to be a hooded figure peering into my room. I could only see its head as it was leaning from the outside of the door. I was not sure what to make of it. Shook my head, looked again, and nothing was there. It's happened a total of three times while I was in that room throughout the years, but that's not where my experiences stop. Ever since I had started seeing that figure, the two doors, which were right next to each other in the corner of the room, would shake violently, often between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. sporadically. Things only picked up from there as I would often be woken up by hearing my name yelled into my ears. There's a couple of different voices that came to me this way. A deep man's voice and a woman's voice were the common ones I would hear. I did not know if they were trying to warn me of something about to happen or if they were just communicating. Fast forward a couple years, my parents and I were moving to a new house. My parents had already moved most of their stuff to the new house, and in the next few days it would be my turn. I was about 18 here. A few nights before the move, I thought I heard my father come into the house, check on me, doors slamming, boots walking across the hardwood floor with the upstairs. I would call, but with no answer. I would text my father asking if he was at the house. He would tell me he had not been there. The final night that I was there, 
couple of chairs upstairs, my bed that needed to be moved. I was sitting or settling in for the last night at home when I heard the door shut and boots walk up the hallway. I yelled up the stairs saying, hello? And the only response was the sound of a chair being dragged across the floor. I went to investigate and saw no one. The door was still locked. There were no cars outside of their own. But six years later, I moved back into this house, renting it from my father. This is when I had my most profound and traumatizing experience. I'd recently been separated from someone I had been seeing, and that may have fed into the energy that had only been in the house for a few months. I worked weird hours at the time and had just gotten home around 1.30 a.m. and went to lay in bed and watch TV to unwind. I had felt a paralyzing fear come over me so badly I literally could not move. Looking to the foot of my bed was a small hunched over shadow on all fours that leaped on top of me and started digging its hands into my chest, making it so I could not breathe. This could not have lasted any longer than a minute, but it felt like an eternity. The whole time trying to muster the strength to sit up, once I broke free and was fully conscious and caught my breath, I broke down crying. People tell me it was just a night terror, but it felt too real. From that day on, there was a very heavy feeling any time I entered the house, and my friends did not like coming over, as it felt weird. Looking back on it, I felt very oppressed being in that house. Not to the point where we, when I was home, I didn't feel like myself and had attempted the worst. When I moved out of the house a couple of years back, I felt like I was being drawn back, as the house wanted me there. But I knew that if I had stayed, I might have gone through with hanging myself. I apologize for jumping around on the story so much, and I want to say that I no longer have these dark feelings. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this. P.S. Your show makes me feel validated in my experiences, and I'm not totally loony. Keep up the good work. Thoughts? A few thoughts. Number one, you're not totally loony. And number two, I'm so glad that you never did anything, mm -hmm. you know, because that can really mess with your head. Mm -hmm. um, but like there's things I got to ask the obvious question that other people are thinking is like, why after all those experiences and being away from that house for a while? Because none of them were. I mean, I'm sure there were some positive experiences in the house, you know, birthdays and stuff. But like, why would you move back? After I, all that yeah. shit. I guess the only thing I would I could guess would be circumstance and like it's the only option for housing, <laughs> you know, like it's this or you're homeless. I don't know. I mean, and you know, some folks find themselves in those situations. I don't know if that's yeah, that, that, that and might, this. That's the only thing that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, really. you could be in a because it sounded like she was. They were kind of in a tough spot, and that you know, very likely could just be the circumstance of that moment where it's like, it's not forever thing, but it's like, I got this or I got nothing for kind of a little gap of time here. So you kind of got to make do with what's available to you. Um, so I don't know. Um, and I wonder if that like her parents are like, Oh, that's a train. That's a big truck, you know, sure. making excuses. But I wonder if anyone else was having the experiences to the extent that mm -hmm. that person was having it. And not speaking about them out loud. Yeah. You it know? sounds like there's a very oppressive force in that house that is, you know, it, it's one of those weird ones where it's almost like an abusive relationship where it, it somehow makes you just want to keep going back and you don't really know why and you keep doing it over and over. Yeah, yeah, that I get. And, and that's, I think, the case sometimes in homes like this where that's, that's just... It, no matter how weird and dark it gets, there's something that is comforting. There's something that's familiar. There's something that speaks to a certain piece in us as people that drives us back beyond just regular reasoning. And I think it's something very deep, very instinctual, not necessarily conscious or, you know, reasoning either it's it's just a very you know whatever you want to call it and i'm trying to grasp for the word here um 
but you know the archaic way of our thinking that just goes okay we, you know it just draws you in in that sort of a level and you know it made me think something else too that <clears throat> so often you don't want to scare your children you want to protect your kids but at a point if you live in a house like that i don't think you're doing anyone favors at all mm-hmm. if you're acting like oh it's just this oh it's just that so your poor kid is terrified and you're not acknowledging that you're dismissing that so i think that you know if you do live in a house like that there comes a point where you have to have an honest conversation about it yeah. and because then the kid's going to feel like it's just me and nobody else is having this but it's me yeah. and you know, so I think that you need that validation for your kid. Yeah. And, and 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 I think there's a way you could do it without it being scary and terrifying. But acknowledging, yeah, I feel like that too sometimes. Mm-hmm. And have a discussion because I think if you don't, then, you know, that could lead, that just, I would think, would just amplify those dark thoughts. Yeah. Like it's just me and I'm crazy and, 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 and so I don't know. It's confusing no matter what. And, but and I am glad that person is in a better place. Yes. Like I'm really thankful. That, that is a very important part of that and, and being able to recognize kind of where some of it was coming from and saying, I, I can't put myself back there anymore. And Yeah. And then when people are like, yeah, I don't believe in ghosts. You can call bullshit. Like I don't care what the you fuck you believe bullshit. in. Yeah. <laughs> You believe in what happened to you, and that's all that mattered. Yeah, and don't dismiss me. Yeah, that's uh, it. Doesn't fucking matter what anybody else thinks. It's what. Right? Yeah, it's what happened to you. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number at Real Ghost Stories Online. Let's go to a caller. Hi, let's hear your story. Hi guys, I have a fairly short story to tell. Um, two short stories to tell. Um, I don't necessarily know if they were paranormal, but, um, I wanted to hear your thoughts on them anyway. So, um, let's see. I, I was in fourth grade and my mom was driving me home from school because the school was over, school day was over. And I had pulled two all-nighters before that day. And, um, I was just really tired, zoned out and stuff. And we were listening to country because we live in the country. (laughs) Um, and then, um, the music, for some reason, started slowly changing from country to Ode to Joy. Now I have no idea why it did that. I could have just been tired. I there's many explanations for it. There's there's I I don't even know what to say. Um. So uh, yeah. Um. Out of all songs, it could Ode to Joy, just Ode to Joy, really. <laughs> um. Um. And I didn't think anything of it because you know I was like had no sense of reality because I was so tired. Um, um, and so I went to, went home and went to bed and that, then I was fine. Uh, um, the next story, it takes place at my grandma's house. Um, oh, and if you're wondering, no, the house has no history of like ghosts or murders or anything. Um, Let's see, so, um, I, since I didn't have anything to play music on in my grandma's house, I basically just, you know how they have, like, these little projectors with music and sounds on them for, like, babies? She has one of those, and, um, I was playing Twinkle Twinkle, because it was, like, the only decent song on there. (laughs) Um, and I was listening to it, and, and I was just about to fall asleep, and then suddenly the music changed. I don't know what it changed to. I just know it changed. And I was half asleep. And I don't remember this, but I walked, I mean, I was, I know I walked to the thing 
and went to change the music. And when I got over there, it changed right back to Twinkle Twinkle. Um, now I don't remember walking there, but I do know I did because like I can't teleport. I just walked from like point A to point B. I was at my bed and then suddenly at where the music thingy was. Um, so I was like half asleep, half awake. And uh, um, I wasn't that tired the last, the, that day I was just, just normal living my life. <laughs> um, and I haven't had very many paranormal experiences, but I think I'm starting to get a lot more than I used to. Um, let's see. Um, well, let me know what y'all think. And, uh, I hope this makes it on the air. And, um, I kind of wrote a little, um, jingle for <laughs> y'all. Um, here I go. Before I found your show, I didn't know where to go to listen to some spooky stories. I'd heard so many, but they weren't scary enough. And then I found the one. And now I spend countless hours of my time listening to real ghost stories <laughs> online. Real ghost stories online. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't have loved that more. <laughs> that made my day. Oh. oh, that was adorable. I love it. It's <laughs> What I love is just the authenticness of our listeners and that people actually do these things without prompting. <laughs> You know, Sweet. it's like it's what we wanted all the time in radio of like people being authentically enjoying our radio stations. <laughs> it's like, say this, say that. And it's like they, they just do it. And I, I think that's the reward of this. It's just it's so cool. That was the best. Um, I have a couple thoughts on this. Yeah. In particular, the first story, because not knowing where they live um, or how far out in the country they lived. But sometimes it is possible you're driving along and another, like you kind of switch and another station can kind of overpower the one you're listening to. Yeah. So it could all of a sudden, that's Ode to Joy. Um, <laughs> but um, so that could, that could happen. I mean, that's not unusual, especially if you're listening to an AM station. Um, yeah. I'm assuming they were listening to and FM, analog but, radio. Yeah. Which uh, so, I mean, is fewer and far between these days. So that could happen. And also when you're really, really tired, your mind just does weird shit. Cause if you're really tired, chances are you haven't ate properly either. Your blood sugar gets out of whack and just weird things happen. Yeah. So that can happen. So I think there could be explanations for the first one. It is kind of a cool song to start playing over Luke Bryan or something <laughs> like that, whatever they're, they're listening to. Yeah. Um, and But the second one, I don't know. I mean, if you're just sitting there listening to Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star, and then it changes, I that one I can't exactly explain. It's a little out there. I don't yeah. know what device she was listening on, Was you know. Yeah, I mean, it, it, for something to play over something on a device, that's a whole other thing then, too. I mean, it's it, it's I mean, bizarre. Yeah. So, I mean, it could be possible. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, I just don't know how. I mean, I, I, I don't know how it would work in a logical sense, meaning it wouldn't be something that is paranormal. Because I'm just thinking of, like, the technical aspects of Bluetooth and things of that nature. Right. You can't, you don't get it. It's it's there or it's not. It's it's like, it's a digital signal. So it's like on television now where it's like you have the blue screen or you have nothing. There's no static. There's no, oh, the signal's kind of shitty. It's either there or it's not. Right. Or it's just cutting out left and right or it's not. And, or was it on a, was she listening on a radio? Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. But, but with, then with digital too, I mean, digital radio, which most stations are these days, that also kind of cuts that out as well, um, depending on how you're, you know, what radio you're tuned in on. Unless it's a really, really old radio, 
I, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 there, the possibilities for those, um, you know, idiosyncrasies that, that are, that were logical, you know, 10, 20 years ago, they get fewer and right. far between today. So what we're saying is we have some questions. Yeah. Well, we believe we need you. some clarification. Yeah. I mean, I totally believe you. And I, it just, it's, oh, absolutely. it's like, you just kind of look at all those possibilities and go, yeah, like those ones that would have been possibilities a couple of years ago. Not so much anymore. Like it really does point to something, something else. So yeah, thank you for sharing that, uh, and thank you for the jingle. And the jingle. And the jingle. Yes, I can't say. Well, yeah, I think. Well, I've had a listener. A listener created our show intro, um, but uh, I don't think anybody's like like made a jingle jingle yet. So there you go. Thank you for That's that. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our number. At Real Ghost Stories Online. Hi. So, do you remember my cat, Chloe? Yes, by the way, it's the 12 year old. Um, do you remember my cat, Chloe, the one that um, was growling at all the spots she liked to lay in because my dead cat Louise was taking them? Yeah, that's me. So, um, I wanted to share another story with um, her in it, and uh, this happened on let's see, New Year's Eve. Um, let's see here. So um, we were um, waiting on the ball to drop. We had about five minutes to go, and I was sitting in my chair, and my mom and dad were on the couch. And my little dog started barking at the front door where she would lay. Um, and he sometimes does that because, like, it's his reflection and he doesn't know who it is because animals freak out when they see their reflection. But anyway, um, so he was going at it. And so I just was like, hey, hey, it's okay, it's just your reflection. And then that's when I realized it was way too dark for it to be his reflection. Um, he eventually stopped, and it was about four minutes till the ball dropped. Um, let's see. And so... Uh, four minutes, and I went back to my chair, and we waited for the ball to drop, like you normally do on the review, and it was at about two minutes now, and we... We're really excited for 2020 to be over because it was such a shitty year, coronavirus and such. Um, and then uh, it hit one minute, and Zippy, our little dash in the mix, started um, barking at my mom's head, the, the back of her head, because like she was sitting on the couch and such. Um, and that's where Louise would also used to lay sometimes because, like, you know, the couch and it's comfortable and stuff. So um, that's when it hit me. That's when I realized that it was not, in fact, his reflection or anything of that sort, but it was Louise, the dead cat. And I said under my breath, Oh my God, Louise is here. She came to celebrate 2020's end with us. And my mom heard me and she said, no, it's not Louise, like, go St. Real or something. Um, but I knew, I mean, I agreed with her, and but I knew deep down that was Louise coming to celebrate the end of 2020 with us. Um, I'm cheering up in the story, so, um, I'm going to end it here, guys. Um, I love your podcast, and uh, keep doing what you're doing. 
Thank you for sharing that story with us. Thoughts? Well, I kind of didn't catch all of it because mm-hmm. it was kind of cutting out a little bit. Yeah. And so she said, Louise is, was, who was that? Is I that don't know. Cat? I, I don't know. Because I kind of missed that part. Mm-hmm. But if it was like, if it was her former cat or somebody else in her life, like I could totally see somebody showing up at the end of that freaking year. Sure. You know, to be like, hey, it's okay. 2021 will be better. In my case, that would have been a joke. <laughs> but uh, his 2021 has not been that much better. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think that somebody could show up to be like, Hey, just to, just so you know, you're not alone and things are going to get better. Sure. I believe that. Absolutely. Kind of a little, uh, piece of relief and kind of help you move forward. Yeah. No. You know, like today I posted, it would have been my dad's birthday. So I posted a picture of him and he's been gone for a long time. And someone posted on there. I truly believe something about my dad being with me at all all the time or something. I don't exactly remember the wording, but I'm like, I absolutely agree with you. Mm -hmm. I do, you know? And I thought that was a very beautiful thing for someone to say to me on the post And so I definitely think there are, you know, those little signs like, hey, we're still here. We're watching you. And 2020 really did suck and things will get better. (laughs) Like, I I agree with all that. Just a little bit of relief. Yeah. From somewhere else saying it's okay. And there's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason you're going through all this shit. We just can't fill you in at this time. If there's a way that they can know ahead and something that we don't, that like, okay, now is the time to fucking say it. <laughs> like, please, this, if any time is the time, come on out and let us know. Just like, can you give me a little yeah. bit of a sign that this shit will end? Because that would be awesome. <sighs> it was the old saying that like on the, uh, like MCI or AT&T commercials, it was like, uh, Oh, what? Like, reach out and touch somebody or something. It's like, fucking do it. Just reach out and fucking touch somebody. Not inappropriately, not in a Chris Hansen sort of way, but in a but way. But in that we got you sort of way. Exactly. The positive, warm hug type sort of way. People need that. Yeah. So come out and do your ghost shit right now if you're ever going to fucking do it. So, yeah. In, I, in uh, that nice way. Yeah. Exactly. Not in the earlier, in the show kind of way where I'm just going to shake your bed. I know. Uh, that was 2021. This week I'm uh, about to go in and get my uh, my second COVID shot and I'm happy about it and I've written Friday off already because that's the day after. And, I would uh, too because it knocked me out so the second shot. I'm ready for it but it's just I'm excited I'm happy but as I'm about to do that I keep seeing news stories all week long going New strains, you know, passing the virus, the all the vaccinate. I'm like, oh, it's fucking great. That's great. Just, just when I got a little bit of hope here of like, oh, okay, I think we might be. Oh, okay. Well, this is fucking. Great. I know, I know, I know. It's just, but, um, I think at we're going to deal with you this. You will forever. have some protection. I agree. I think we're going to keep dealing with this for probably the rest of our lives. And I think it's going to be like the flu shot. It's just right. going to be another one where it's like get your flu, you get your flu shot, and your COVID shot. Like right now, it's like you need another shot. Yeah, you probably will by next year. You probably will, and it's just going to be one of those things where you just kind of got to keep taking it. And that's what I think. That's probably where we are at. And so many scientists were saying that up front to begin with, and I think a lot of us just didn't want to think that way. Because it's it's just you don't want to. And I, I, I don't fault anyone. But I also kind of thought, yeah, that's probably what's going to end up being. Anyhow. And, it, you know, the flu every year has variation. So it's like, OK, they exactly. kind of guessed it. Yeah. It's like, well, OK, the flu vaccine is 70 percent effective. But well, if you get it, yeah. it won't be as bad. We haven't eradicated the flu. And we yeah. have this new strain of something that was likely made in a laboratory somewhere that is never going to be eradicated because it's been designed to continually uh, elude everything uh, over time and morph. And uh, guess what? So 
Eventually, it'll be The Walking Dead. Give it five years. Oh, my God. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll have a few more good years. Maybe get Disney in one more time. <laughs> And well, then... way to bring us all down, Tony. <laughs> I can't even Pollyanna that shit. And then, uh, you know, it's like, you know, everybody's eating uh, each other alive in the streets. So, <laughs> And I'm vegetarian, so obviously I will die. And that's the fucked up part. You're going to like have a really big appetite for people, people and plants. That's it. It's uh, you're no, no animals, but just people. So <laughs> get, uh, you know, it'll be like Ponderosa, but like on a. A crazy scale. <laughs> Are Ponderosas around anymore? Is that still a recipe? I have no idea. Do you remember Ponderosa? Yeah, but it makes me think of Yellowstone, and they don't call it. I think it's a ranch. It's not a Ponderosa. <laughs> no, no, Ponderosa, the, re- the buffet restaurant is what I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you meant like... Like the bananas. No, no, no. Ponderosa was like a, uh, a buffet restaurant um, in like the 70s and 80s. And uh, into the early I 90s, remember a that. Bit. And it was like it was a big. It was like it was like old country buffet kind of. But it was like it was like Applebee's had a buffet. It would be like that. So it was a little bit nicer than like the old country buffet or the hometown buffet. Um, and they would like do steaks and stuff. And then you, so I guess kind of golden corralish. But it was a little bit nicer than golden corral even too. And they just had a really kind of cool salad bar. And like as a kid, I was like, oh, this is amazing. And they, what I loved about it was like the the salad bar area because it was just like loads of like fresh pineapple and all the shit kids want. So I'd like eat, you know, a, a fucking bowl of bacon bits and sunflower seeds and then uh, load up on pineapple. <laughs> and it's like, all right, there we go. Basically a bowl of salt and pineapple. So it was kind of like deer food. Um but they would have all sorts of stuff. And I was, it was uh, back in the days when you're amazed by buffets. At least I was when I was a child. I'm kind of grossed out by them now, but Harper's still. One has- of these days, you'll be telling your daughter, well, in my day, we could go to a buffet and just pick our food out ourselves. Oh, Harper has gone to uh, Golden Corral before. I, uh, I had never gone to a Golden Corral until about three years ago. And we were in Branson. And there's like, I guess, the world's largest golden corral there. <laughs> and one night we were just driving around like going, what are we going to have for dinner? She's like, can we try that golden corral? Like, <laughs> I don't fucking care. It's a dream of mine. Like, I don't care. I've been to a buffet forever. Let's go try it. So we went in there. And I mean, to a child, it is a wonderland because it's, oh, yeah. it's like every food you could imagine. And then they have like a chocolate fountain and all the cotton candy you can eat. And it was just craziness. And I will say this, a little bit of a guilty pleasure there. I kind of enjoyed it. I really honestly kind of did. There's certain foods I'm not going to touch on a buffet, but there's certain ones I did. And I kind of enjoyed the salad bar. I really, there's a lot of good stuff I can make stuff with. And I was like, yeah, it's not half bad. I mean, it's a golden corral, but you know, but I was uh, and Harper was excited. She was you made your kid happy. That was a good parenting. It was. Day. It kind of took me back to my childhood because she was so excited, and I was kind of like, "Oh, okay, let's make the best of it. Let's kind of have some fun. Let's go pick some stuff out that I like." And it's like, okay, this is kind of fun. I kind of see why I like this as a kid, <laughs> you know. And and she actually mentioned that to me the other day because we drove by one, and she's like, "Dad, when COVID's over, can we go to a Colton Corral again?" <laughs> <laughs> like, Absolutely. Like, yes, honey, we certainly can. So it's it's on my list, actually, of things to do once things are a little bit better. We're almost there, but uh, hopefully we can get there. <laughs> anyway, that's going to wrap up today's uh, episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, become an extra podcast person an EPP. Sign up at ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories to support the show and keep us on the air until next time for carol i'm tony thanks for listening to real ghost stories online